why should I watch Future IQ if I'm not going to remember any of it? I mean, what are you saying? A listener recently asked this interesting question. Okay. I recently watched an old Future IQ episode after an year. Hmm. And I realized that I didn't remember most of it. And I wonder what is the point of watching if I can't remember. Channel band karvaya But this listener had a very interesting point, I do concede. If people don't remember what they have watched in our episodes, then that is a problem for yeah. us also. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a very interesting question and the answer is even more interesting. So that's why we are doing an entire episode on this. Okay. okay. This uh, is why you should be subscribing to Future IQ and uh, commenting because sometimes your comments become the source for a new episode. Yeah. So let me start with... Paul Graham, who ran into exactly the same problem, right? Okay. Paul Graham is the founder of Y Combinator, one of the top startup accelerators in the world. Mm. Okay. Mm. He realized once that when he was looking at some book that he had read in the past, that he didn't remember any of that book. What use is it to read all these books if I remember so little from them? Hmm. Valid question. Yeah. And here is his answer. Reading and experience train your model of the world. And even if you forget the experience or what you read, its effect on your model of the world persists. Your mind is like a compiled program you have lost the source code of. It works, but you don't know why. That's a very interesting analogy that he's applied using computers and software terminology. And I think I kind of get where he's coming from. There is more. Okay. When this question was asked to me, I instinctively knew the answer, hmm. right? I knew that the answer was that even if you don't remember the episode, it has still changed your brain in ways that are beneficial, right? But I had no idea where that answer had popped into my mind from, okay? okay. I didn't remember where, I, I sort of vaguely knew that I had probably read something like this before, but I didn't remember it. And I was, I mean, thinking about it for a while and suddenly someone somewhere mentioned that Paul Graham has said this. Ah. And I then remembered that I had actually read this Paul Graham article and that's why I knew this is the answer. And for this episode, I went back and I read that entire article and I didn't remember any of the details or any of the examples he had given in this article. Hmm. But the important point had stayed with me, right? Ah, so what you are saying here is watching our episodes, watching Future IQ episodes, also does something similar to the brains of the people watching it. Yes. Uh, and you that's why you have to watch it. Yes. In fact, it does two things specifically to your brain. Okay. okay. The first one is Bayesian updating. Okay. We have done an episode on Bayesian inferencing before, but yeah. basic idea is the following, right? That you have opinions about the world. Yes. Any new data that comes in, does not come to you raw. You always have some prior thoughts about it. Some prior beliefs about it, some prior understanding of that And topic. that prior understanding of anything pretty much colors how you see the world, how you understand the world, how you interpret data coming in, how you choose which things are worth paying attention to. All of that depends on your existing set of beliefs which are called the priors. Right. More importantly, any new data that comes in, which you choose to pay attention to, is going to adjust your priors a little bit. True. So that afterwards, from that point on, you might change how you view the world. Right? Right. So this is what Paul was talking about when he said that you read something, you don't remember the details, but the updates to your priors are on a very subconscious level, subliminal level. Exactly. Right? All right. So this is what is happening to you. You watch an episode, it adjusts your prior, it adjusts the way you view the world, but you forget the details. The second important thing to keep in mind hmm. is that our brains can't remember things on just one watch or one read, right? Yeah. Anything you watch or read, you're going to forget unless it gets repeated a little while later or at regular spaced intervals, right? We have done an episode on spaced repetition memory. Yeah. And what is happening when you watch future IQ, the hmm. channel, not one episode, hmm. is that some themes, some concepts keep getting repeated, right? System 1 versus System 2, hmm. Bayesian updating, deliberate practice, supply yeah. versus demand. Hmm. So over time, these concepts 
they go into your brain so you might not remember the exact details you might not remember the exact examples we use but the concept gets trended yeah it might look like we are actually trying to push more of our episodes to people but yeah you should watch future iq episodes again and again over and over yeah. but and this, also you should subscribe like and comment yeah. so it's not just about future iq right uh you learn about a concept here yeah. and then you go watch something else like you watch veritasium and he says something very similar you read a book and you find some concepts there all of this a whatsapp forward might give you things that we have talked about right so or this, navin's newsletter which is also called future iq you should subscribe to that also definitely there are multiple sources where you can get similar kind of information and we we keep referring to those channels also in our episodes right exactly as paul said you form opinions but you don't know the source because the source was a collection of distributed spaced repetition happening in your brain right yeah. through various channels and books and whatsapp forwards yeah and i just realized that i have been seeing incentive design and preference cascades in a lot of places because those were the two most recent episodes or those yeah. were the themes topics mental models we spoke about in the two most recent episodes yeah, do that you know why that happens right why this is the bader meinhof effect which is that once you see something and you hear the name for it then you start seeing it everywhere okay yeah why is this magic no what is happening is that these things were all always there but because you saw them or discussed them on a future iq episode mm -hmm. now you have a name for that concept and so when you run into that concept again this time you remember it because earlier you would just you know skim over it because you didn't recognize it but yeah. now you know the name you know the importance and so you pay attention to it right ah so the frequency illusion is also what it is called if i'm not mistaken right so this is what future iq is doing for you right hmm. you are being given a whole bunch of patterns where the details you are going to forget but the patterns are important they are suddenly now everywhere and, and you start spotting those patterns future more iq frequently. is making them visible to you yeah much more important in the modern era hmm. is the algorithm yes the algorithm is all the social media websites and the ads on various websites and pretty much everything on the internet hmm. is controlled by algorithms which are watching your behavior trying to figure out what you are interested in and then showing you more of it because they want you to stay on their website and on click on their ads so yeah. that they can make money right yes usually we talk about the algorithm all of this as a bad thing right yeah but it can be a good thing right because you watch a future iq episode the algorithm says ooh this person is interested in mental models and first principles and uh, you know the kind of concepts we talk about yeah and then the algorithm starts showing you more of that right so now suddenly youtube will start showing you more things that are like future iq which is why even if you forget what you saw in a future iq episode it is still important because now the algorithm is going to show you those kinds of things again in fact you turn on a future iq episode you close your eyes and your ears and you just keep it running it will still go in your brain because what happens is that from that day forward the algorithm is going to show you related similar things and you are going to watch at least one or two of those related similar things and exactly. that information is still going to go into your brain eventually because you watched a future or you didn't watch and you forgot a future iq episode i am honestly okay with this because it's a win win situation if you start a future iq video and leave it unattended it kind of helps us rank yeah. better in the algorithm also so okay, win win okay, okay. <laughs> chill okay we are not telling people to leave future iq episodes unattended okay they are interesting episodes they are good episodes <laughs> future iq is good in and of itself but an added benefit is that it improves all of your social media for you <laughs> we always think about the betterment of uh, society and specifically the betterment of you as a person yeah one more thing hmm. okay every minute you spend watching future iq 
is a minute you don't spend watching terrible things and toxic stuff <laughs> like TV news. Okay. Yeah, we have done an episode on the fact that uh, you shouldn't be watching the news. The news is actually toxic for you. Watch Future IQ episodes instead. Hmm. And while you're at it, comment. Uh, turn on the notifications. That makes me sound like a shill. But I'm honestly okay with it. But what I'm getting from all of this is that if I want to remember these concepts, these mental models, these first principles that we talk about, hmm. I should switch to active learning yeah. rather than passive reinforcement. Correct. I mean, uh, as I said earlier, we forget hmm. very quickly. Okay. Uh, in the past, we have talked about the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve, which points out that if you see something or you hear something or you learn something, Within 30 seconds or a few minutes, you are going to forget it unless it gets reinforced. Yeah. If it gets reinforced, then it is going to stick around for say around 10 minutes. Hmm. But in that 10 minutes, it has to be reinforced again. Then it will stick around for a day and so on. Right. I mean, look at this curve on the screen. Yeah. So if you were trying to ask the question that I really, really want to remember all the future IQ episodes. What should I do? Yeah. What you have to do is spaced repetition, right? So either, I mean, basically you should watch every episode every day. <laughs> no, you can't because, you know, watching all episodes takes two days. I did the calculation. Oh, okay. okay. No. So what you have to do is... Take a, create a note taking system. Hmm. Okay. That uh, there are a lot of people who do this. Okay. Whenever they read something or they watch something which is important enough, they pause every once in a while and they take notes. They have their own favorite note taking system. Some people do it on an actual book with a pen and paper. Some people do it in just a notepad and notes or something like that. Other people use software. There is software like Notion and Obsidian and Roam and so on. Okay? Yeah. So if you are the kind of person who does this, you should go for it, right? Uh, it takes a lot of discipline. So not everyone will be able to do it. But if you can do it, it's a superpower, right? A lot of people ask me that all these concepts for future IQ episodes, where do they come from? I have a note taking system and I just 15 go into years my of notes he yeah. has taken and 15 years of notes has led to these 100 150 episodes that we've done yeah. so far but I'm not trying to say that everyone should do this right if you can do this this is great but if you can't do this don't feel bad it is okay I mean just keep watching and it is okay you will forget or at least you will forget the surface level things but the concepts especially at a lower level in your brain, mm. they will stick around, right? Yeah, in fact, one of my attempts uh, with all of the things that we do on Future IQ, with the series that we do mm. here, mm. is to uh, learn by osmosis from you as much as I can to the extent that it seeps down into my system one. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about system two actually getting activated in time. Uh, exactly, right? I mean, when you say that, oh, I didn't remember any of this. Hmm. That is really your system two saying that I don't remember. Right. System one is keeping track. So even without explicit memory of those things, it is there just below the surface and it will pop out when necessary. The way it popped out for me when this question was asked to me. Correct. Right? And in fact, uh, this technique... Uh, called priming hmm. is also used by a lot of conmen and magicians hmm. to make you pick a certain card when they open out the deck in front of you. Yeah. What you don't realize is the card that you've picked because that card looked interesting to you, looked interesting because you've been primed for that card in various ways. I think hmm. there's a movie... Uh, now you see me, which uh, uses this in a very interesting way to conduct a heist. Yeah. Go watch it whenever you right. can to understand the concept of priming. The movie is also quite good. Yeah. But so, yeah. to summarize, right? It doesn't have to be just future IQ episodes, right? Pretty much everything you do in your life, the good things, the reading and the watching and all of that, right? Keep consuming them, even if you think you're not going to remember any of it, right? It is fine if you forget them, just Still, continuing to watch them is a good thing. This is especially true in the age of the algorithm, right? And that's why you should not only watch and read and consume, but you should also like and comment. Okay? <laughs> uh, but, I love it. And if you really, really want to remember, which is not necessary, 
But if you want to remember, there are systems which will give you superpowers, right? Absolutely. And in fact, uh, I would like to know what other channels uh, you've started watching after starting to watch Future IQ. Because there are some channels that we regularly watch. For example, I'm a huge fan of Veritasium. I'm a huge fan of Number File. Mm -hmm. Huge fan of 3 Blue 1 Brown. Mm -hmm. And also Star Talk by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are channels that I watch. And uh, the algorithm has now started recommending more of these things to me. So if there are any other channels that I'm missing out on, please let us know in the comments. And uh, yeah, it will also help others follow those channels as well. This is not just about Future IQ. This is about making you a better person. This is about ensuring that you get to learn some of these concepts in whatever way possible, even if it is by osmosis. And in fact, you should go and check out the episode we did on learning by osmosis, which we line up right after this. Shrikant, Naveen, Future IQ.